My name is Joe Dignam. I am the Chief Water Plant Operator for Maine Water Company Southern Divisions. Um, so I cover water treatment uh, operations for Biddeford Saco area and Berwick as well for this contract operation. I am responsible for all water treatment, uh, all state and federal requirements, reporting, water quality, and in addition to water quality in the treatment plant, we are also responsible for maintenance and operation of the distribution system, flushing of fire hydrants, and any maintenance or emergency uh, repairs that might come up. Hello everyone, my name is James Bolissimo, Berwick Town Manager, and I'm here today to provide an update for our water system and how our contract is going with Maine Water Company. We officially contracted with Maine Water starting February 1st, 2023, but we reached out to them earlier, several months before in October of 2022, and we really needed help with um, operations. Maine Water was willing and ready and able to help out. Um, they came down to our plant and visited. And um, coincidentally, we also had Joe Dignam. Um, he's really stepped up and he started working with us in October of 2022. And uh, both uh, have been exceedingly great at uh, finding improvements for our water plant and, and just being the day-to-day -day operator to find uh, improvements and the contract is going, I would say, as good as it possibly can go. Maine Water Company began a contract with the town of Berwick in February of 2023. And since February 2023, since we've taken over, um, operation of the water system. Water quality has exceeded state and federal requirements um, for quality and we've had no violations and we've had no water quality issues since the beginning of the contract. As I mentioned, Maine Water as a, as a whole, the team has found various uh, opportunities for short-term improvement and for improvements into the long-term um, for uh, continuous water quality improvements and reliability. Um, and we were also fortunate this past summer to have the rain we had so the manganese issue didn't pop up um, as it has in the past few years. Maine Water Company is a public utility company. We serve about 85,000 customers throughout the state of Maine in about 21 communities. We own and operate 12 water systems throughout the state. In addition to owning and operating those systems, we also share knowledge with other, other communities on a contract basis, such as the town of Berwick. So the, the key difference for the town of Berwick is the town and the taxpayers still own the infrastructure, the water system, the facilities, the pipes in the ground, the tanks, and everything associated with it. On a main water's role in the town of Berwick on a contract basis is operation, maintenance and billing for the water system. And Maine Water has proven to work very well with our engineer, Wright Pierce. So between our engineer and the water operators, um, a lot of the projects that we've had planned and there's some new ones, th those are going very well. Um, so some of the work that we have done already, we have deep cleaned the filters to improve water quality treatment. Uh, we have replaced several outdated components and purchased new components in the event that they fail. We have them on, on backup. Last year, we replaced our SCADA system, which is essentially the brains of the operation. It is a computer system that can help automate the process and it assists the water operators with treatment and it shows metrics to show the performance of the plant and it also shows the water level in the standpipe. So in the town of Berwick, there's currently about 1,000 customers that we serve. Um, we read water meters for all of those customers quarterly, and there is a person that reads the meters by hand um, every quarter, so you'll see them. That's one of the people that you'll frequently see coming up to your house often, and they'll read um, the water meter by putting a reader on the side of the house. Um, and we use that to get a quarterly num number in cubic feet um, of water that you've used each quarter and you'll see that reflected on your water bill. What remains to be done? We have uh, two very significant projects. One is a shorter term project that will replace the underdrains that are main filters 
and replaces the media in the system. So it's a significant uh, maintenance for the, the filters. Um, and, and this project also comes along with additional equipment upgrades to replace um, replace equipment that needs to be replaced, but also have backups on hand. And um, we saw last year we, we had some issues where we had parts go down and we had a lead time to get a replacement. And what that does is um, we, we've had parts where we had one filter not running optimally and it just becomes hard to keep up with the demand at that point. So a lot of this is redundancy, being proactive, and just ensuring it doesn't happen as, as much as we possibly can in our control. So this is the Salmon Falls River. This is where the intake is located for the water treatment plant for the town of Berwick. Um, it's made out of PVC. It's 12 inches in diameter. And it just comes right out here into the river about 10 or 12 feet, and then it does a 90 degree angle up. And it has a screen on it to protect from any sticks or um, you know, fish or anything like that, any bigger, bigger items that we don't want to end up up at the treatment plant. So every day we pull about 150 to 200,000 gallons of water through this pipe up to the treatment plant to treat it and to turn it into drinking water. None of the water goes back into the river directly through the treatment plant. Any sewer water comes, that comes from the treatment plant goes to the sewer, the Berwick Sewer District for treatment. So one of the unique challenges of running a water system that has a river for a source, which is actually quite rare for the state of Maine. It's um, in Maine, it generally will get water from lakes or ponds. Um, but in this case, the Salmon Falls River is a source for Berwick. It's also the source for Summersworth. Their intake is directly across the river from ours within feet. Um, but one of the unique challenges with running a system that's on a river is we have no control over what's coming down the river. We kind of, we have to be more reactive than proactive with our watershed management. And a big part of that is collaborations with local land trusts, um, environmental groups, the DEP, and the folks that own and operate the dams upstream. Because something as simple as releasing water up in Milton, New Hampshire can have a major effect on the drinking water down here in Berwick and the water that's coming into the treatment plant and it, we have to adapt to the water as it comes. So keeping those open lines of communication from here all the way upstream to our headwaters is a critical part of our strategy for watershed protection here in Berwick. Recreation on the river really has no impact at all on our, on our water treatment as long as the recreation is done in a sustainable manner. It's important to keep in mind, no matter where you are on the river, it is a public water supply and anything that you do can have a direct impact on the water that you drink here in town. The um, other project I'd say is the longer term project that we have planned for later 2024 is number one is the pretreatment facility, which is the addition of an entirely new pretreatment facility where the raw water is routed to this facility to be pre-treated, meaning removing some of the manganese and the turbidity before it even gets to the water plant, then to be uh, even further, further treated. To go along with this project is a water recycling system, to have a settlement system, um, and what that does, it replaces, a, we have a water recycling system that has proven to be inefficient. So between the pre-treatment process and the recycling process, along with the other pump replacements and the filler maintenance will um, significantly increase water quality and water, water reliability into the future. Back here, they're called geotubes and they're basically a fabric filter that we use to recycle the, the wastewater that comes from the treatment plant. And when I say wastewater, I'm, it, I'm talking about the backwash water, the process water from filtering the organics out of the river. So this is all your organic material, your sediment um, that comes from the river that we filter out of the water. It ends up out here where it's collected in these geo bags and the water will pass through the bag but it will leave all the sediment inside. And that water is then recycled back through the treatment plant. So we treat it again. And it will, when these are get full, we will have, we'll have a company come and they'll take 
the bags and the material inside of them out and use them as landfill cover. So none of it goes back to the river and none of it goes to the sewer. It all is recycled right here through the plant. Uh, we had a 2016 study that went over some of the issues. So our water plant has issues removing natural organic matter. And we've had issues with disinfectant byproducts in the past. Uh, we've had issues with the wastewater from the, the geotube and the recycling system because it is inefficient and difficult to manage op operationally. We've had critical process pumps and chemical storage equipment in poor condition or not meeting design requirements for operations that need replacement, and we've done a lot of those replacements already. The core trading process, while it is optimized, it's, it, can, it has issues responding to the rapid changing water quality. So when the, there's high levels of drought with the manganese, or we see sometimes in the fall with high levels of turbidity, the pre-treatment process helps to get it to a water quality that the plant does will be able to treat. This particular setup is unique to this system. I don't believe there's any other system in the state of Maine that uses the geobag system. Um, the one limitation of it is that we can't use it in the winter time when it's below freezing. Um, so typically what an other treatment plants will do, and this is part of a capital upgrade that is planned for the coming years is to add a lagoon out behind the treatment plant that will catch all the wastewater and dewater it out there. And we'll be able to use that all year long and be able to capture any um, process waste, any sludge that um, accumulates in those, in those lagoons and we'll be able to scrape it off and use it in the same manner that will give us year round capabilities. In terms of operations with main water, just to give you an idea of an illustration, um, when we had a water department, we staffed, staffed ourselves. We had four or five full-time staff members. Main water, we have numerous staff that works on the team. There's a 24 seven customer service line. They have their own engineer department. They have a chemist on staff, various members of the administration, various water operators and all kinds of experience at our fingertips to consult with other plants in the region. If we need a pump or a chemical, they're just a phone call away. We have some customer service features that we didn't have before. There's an online bill pay feature. Also, you can pay with a credit card at any time through the phone, and that was not an option before. Since Maine Water has taken over operation of the facility, we've made several optimizations to the chemistry, the water quality, um, and the operations of the facility. So we have, we have made major improvements internally. We've added process measuring equipment. Um, we've added several tests in the laboratory that we do every day. And we've also maintained and upgraded many pieces of equipment inside of the treatment plant. Um, for the next 12 months, um, 12 to 18 months, we will have major upgrades planned, capital upgrades for this facility. Um, some of those will include new pumps, um, finished water pumps, raw water pumps. Um, we'll have new filter media, under drains in the filters, um, and several other components of the treatment process that will be upgraded and renewed. And that will be extremely beneficial to the ability for operators to treat water here and remain exceeding state and federal water quality requirements for the future. A few years ago, the ratepayers, uh, the town approved a bond for $1.2 million that the ratepayers um, pays for that, that loan amount. And that was the primary reason for the last rate increase. Out of that funds, most of it's still available. We've spent um, some of that money, but actually the, most of the amount that has been spent has already been forgiven by the state, we were, we were awarded a grant that uh, forgives some of that bond. So out of that, uh, $247,000 was forgiven from principal so that we received that in the form of a grant. Um, we still have $2.8 million in earmark funding. So that's a 100% that's a grant, grant 
on top of approximately, we probably have $800,000 left in the bond. And that money will go towards the um, replacement of the pumps, the pro project we have in the shorter term. And it also will go towards the pretreatment process and the recycling system. Here are our two filter units. Um, they're identical units. And what they do is they go through two separate processes to clean the, the water coming in from the river. So what happens when they come in, when the water comes in from the river is the first step that it goes through is called clarification. We add coagulation chemicals to the water, which cause a, a chemical process that binds the organics in the water together and makes longer chains of organic materials and it makes them easier to remove. So the water flows through the first half of the filter unit and it goes through the clarification process and that removes about 80% to 90% of the organics and the, the uh, things in the water that we want to get out. From there it goes on to the filter unit. The filter is made up of anthracite coal, uh, two different types of sand and gravel and garnet sand. And the water flows down through the filter. It works very much the same way as a charcoal filter on your kitchen sink wood or a Brita filter in your house. Um, it filters the water and it also removes any taste and odors. And from there, we've removed everything in the water that shouldn't be there. The water comes out clean and clear, but it's not ready to drink at that point. After filtration, we still have to disinfect the water to remove any bacteria viruses or any microorganisms that might still be in the water that made it through the filter at about five microns. Once the filter, filtered water comes out, it goes underneath the floor and it travels through a series of weirs underneath the floor and we call that a clear well. We add chlorine to it at the beginning of the clear well and by the time it gets to the end, we have a mathematical calculation that tells us based on the chlorine we add and the time that the water spends in the clear well, how much of or the uh, microorganisms and viruses we've inactivated and killed in the water. Um, so we, we remove 99.999% of the viruses and, and microorganisms in the water, which is industry standard and it's the best you can do with this technology. So from here, when the water goes out into the system, we add chlorine again to maintain a residual in the pipes so that no bacteria will grow. We also test regularly in the system to make sure that there's no bacteria growing in the system and we test for water quality here in the lab with several parameters and out in the system on a regular basis as well just to ensure that the water leaving the plant is consistent throughout the system in the tank and all the dead ends pipes throughout the system um, is consistent water quality. So lastly, the last point in the question is how does it affect the water rates? The change to main water for operations alone does not change the water rates. It actually constitutes a slight savings. The cost for town staffing would have been $24,592 a month. The cost for main water operations is $22,000 per month. Any future rate increases will accommodate cost of living adjustments, so inflation, and will go into needed improvements for the system. And at this time, no rate adjustments are planned.